Hello everyone, welcome back to the second episode of creating a cool dragon animation. In this episode we're going to build the key poses of the body uh, for the dragon. So first let's check out our storyboard again. Oh, empty screen. So if this happens, uh, just check uh, in your show panel what's going on in your viewport. You can make it loose by pressing this bar right here. So let's see, our image plane is not on. So well, here we are, now we can see everything. So these are the most important shortcuts for animation is to toggle the NURBS curves or controllers, how some would call it. The polygons is used to make your uh, geometry visible and the image plane is what we see right here. So let's see. So we have these uh, key poses that we want to recreate. Uh, with our dragon. So a cool thing you can do is just split off your panels. So on, you have on one side your storyboard and the other side you have your animation. So let's see here, we can go to layouts and then two panes side by side. So now we have our storyboard and our uh, top view. So to quickly go out of this, we can do panels, perspective and camera or Maya has a cool feature called the hotbox. Just hold space and you can see a lot of things pop up. These are the most important features of Maya. And if you want to switch cameras, you can just left click on Maya and then go for perspective view, left view, top view. So we were here a second ago. And uh, to quickly change, you can just hold space, left click on Maya and perspective view. But you can do a lot more things. You can go to the panels, you can uh, adjust your show, lighting, shading. Like a lot of all these great tools can be found in here in this small area. So let's look at perspective. So our great, great dragon. So before we start animating, there are a few things we can do to work more efficient instead of just going head first into the animation. As you can see here on the right bottom, you can see all the keystrokes I'm doing to follow along. So now I'm holding control, shift, alt. And if it's important when you need to press some kind of button, uh, I will let you know on your mouse. The first thing I will show you is how to make a control set or multiple control sets. So let's focus on the animation area first. Uh, what you can do, instead of just going fully on the animation uh, panel, we can tear off this panel. So, now you have teared off a copy, or you can just tear it off completely. That's up to you. And if you have multiple screens, you can just put your storyboard on one screen and focus on your animation uh, completely here. So let's change our layout back to one single plane. And let's just open up this one later. So as you can see, our dragon has a lot, a lot of controllers. So there are a few things uh, you can do in the beginning to work more efficient. For example, you want to have a quick way to key all the controllers uh, that you can see here. What you can do is hold Alt 2, which will hide in the show our polygons, as you can see. Now you can select uh, your controllers here. It's even better if you just hide, uh, hide everything, so you won't see nothing, and then you press Alt 1, and now it's only controllers. So you select everything, you go to create sets quick select set select set and you can write something like dragon all and now this will appear here and this contains all your controllers so now let's press alt 2 again to get our polygons back in the viewport 
if you right select and right click your quick select set you can select all set members and this is a quick way to get everything selected there are a few things uh, or a few sections that you can create for your dragon like for example as we can see the tail also has a lot of controllers i don't want to be like always selecting holding shift shift each time you want to make a key so let's do it for one time now so again alt 2 and select them here all for just once and create a quick selection set and call it dragon tail and you can see it appears here like that so and this we, can, we will do along the way a few more times uh, depending on what areas we need a lot so we don't really have to like always zoom in very deeply into the rig and that kind of stuff Another thing that's very useful is setting up your graph editor shortcut. You have here in the windows panel animation your graph editor. As you can see there is nothing appearing here. That means there is no hotkey. So by pressing this we can see our graph editor. But we don't always go, want to go to windows animation graph editor. So we can make a shortcut for this a hotkey. So go to Windows Setting Preferences and Hotkey Editor. Here we can see all the already assigned keys in, within Maya. So here you have to choose a category. So it's in one of the menu items. So we pick menu item and then we go to Windows, Animation Editors and now you have Graph Editor. I'm used to working with uh, letter G. As you can see, there's already a default hotkey for this uh, in Maya, so on press, but uh, I never use this feature or not that much, so the repeat loss feature. So I like to keep my graph editor on the G for, you know, G for graph. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, it's all up to you. You can put it on any letter you want. And if you're someone who uses the repeat loss feature a lot of, times i would suggest uh, taking another key like you have a lot of more gray stuff here or you can put a combination like ctrl g or it's up to you and you just press save and close and now when you press g or the letter that you chose your graviter will appear and there's one more thing that we will probably use more in the future but it's a bit of scripting so don't be afraid, you don't need a lot of Python or Mel knowledge to use these features in Maya because Maya is a really good echoing system. So to go to your uh, script editor, you can press this right button on the right, on the bottom button, and this will open up your script editor. Here you can see all the things that already happened within Maya. And you have something called history and echo all commands. So as you, let's, for example, put in a cylinder. You move it around, see, it will appear here. And when you delete it, it will also appear here. And when you go, want to go really deep into this, you could do echo all commands and this will go even further into what it should tell you it will tell you everything so normally it will only do basic stuff like really commands but here it's uh, echoing like commands that you wouldn't think of quickly like opening a script editor it will give you like the entire code for it so you can make buttons with this let's create a button that will automate our shrinking of our slider. So let's say in animations, when you do like big shots, you go into like a big number, right? Like uh, 1000, so not 10,000, but like 1000 is definitely something that you will run into in long, long shots, or if you're doing one entire sequence in one Maya file, but it's not really workable since you're like selection, a frame selector is very tiny. So what you often do is 
um, make this one like 50 so it's a lot gives a lot more control let's let's try to make a button for this so here we can see everything that changes when we put in different values so we just saw me putting to 50 and now putting it to 100 again so we can copy this and paste it in here and we can change it back to 50 let's say so control a to select everything and control enter to run the code you might have noticed it switched back to 50 and you can do this for every value as you would like like this so now let's create a button for this so it's always going to 50 and then we can slide around in the same size everywhere when we're like further in the animation progress and need to like polish some stuff that we have more control in our time slider but do not lose the entire like sequence length so how to create a button for this it's actually really easy it's always useful to put it in the correct shelf so let's put it in animation just select it middle mouse click on your selection and just hold your middle mouse click and drag it onto your shelf and you will see like a new button appears to test it let's put it on 200 okay and now press this button and it snaps back to 50. Easy, right? What we now can do is give this a name so we know what this button will do. Once we have like a lot of buttons, things will get very chaotic if we don't. So right click and go to edit. And here you can see the command that's executing. And here in the shells, we can change a lot. So here it's you can put your own icon, but by default, it's doing the Maya command button uh, PNG but we can give it an icon label so ts for time slider 1 to 50 and press enter and now we can see ts 1 50 and we can give it a color if you want like maybe yellow so it stands out a bit more so now you can save all shells and now they are saved uh, you can turn off the echo all commands if you if you like um, that's up to you and you can close the script, the script editor again so now I uh, you know how to do or how to create a button in uh, in Maya but you can do this for for everything right like for example if you're tired of doing the left click right clicks left members you can even make a button for this or if you for example you don't like putting a hotkey for your graph editor same thing it will pop up right here again so oh, let me echo the commands again history echo all commands you can see the grafter being launched and this is the code for it graph editor here it's where it started and then it will launch and you can make a button out of it again now we know how to work efficiently uh, we can start creating our key poses